Thank you all for tuning in this week's episode of the Metal Forge. My name is Mark Jackson, and I am your host. Holy hell, this is the third time I've tried doing this monologue today before stopping. So, it is Friday of the big goddamn metal show, and we have Vlad's Blood Orange Sauce here. We're putting it on the eggs in, in the morning. We're putting it on the on the lunch and today is the first day of the big goddamn metal show at the Mag Bar. So come see us tonight. We have five awesome bands. Where there were going to be six, but one had to pull out for um, for issues. And due to logistics, we had to keep it at five. So we've got all Midnight Hellion, Idol Throne, Windrider, and Treason tonight at the Mag Bar. So fucking awesome. Super rad bands. Idol Throne from Northern Indiana. Wind Rider from Johnson City, Tennessee. Treason from, from Glasgow, Kentucky. Midnight Hellion from uh, New Jersey. And Ulm headlining tonight. Holy shit. Super rad times. I am so excited for it. And then obviously tomorrow we've got night two of the big goddamn metal show. With such a fucking stacked lineup. You know, we've got Rat King, Lavaborn, Free Warren, Joe Grudge, uh, Ice Howl, and Sanhedrin. Holy shit. Super awesome, awesome, awesome bands. And I'm I'm enjoying this. I love putting on this show at Magbar. This year, it's all ages. So thank you all. Thank you all for coming out in advance and doing the thing and all the stuff and all the stuff and all the things. Goddamn right, right? So today's guest is from the Big Goddamn Metal Show, and it is Free Warren. And Free Warren is kind of more into the alt-rock uh, genre, kind of like a grunge meets. Uh, there's a little bit of seether in there. There's a um, you, You'll dig it. It's kind of got a little bit of a new wave of traditional heavy metal meets uh American metal, you know, there's, uh, there's definitely some, uh, GNR feel to it, um, you know, so cool stuff, we're debuting a new song today, which is awesome, and obviously, uh, they actually have some pretty cool videos out, and, uh, one of these songs that we're going to debut today is the brand new video, so this first video that we're gonna play for the song Warm Bones completely blew me away because you don't see many independent bands with a production like this and it's awesome and I think more independent bands need to need to do this you know spend the money do the thing don't fucking go AI like other fucking bands out there and shit like that so anyway we're just gonna get into it we're gonna slam fucking forward shout outs to jason and all hell and everybody out in the north carolina area in the new heavy metal wasteland because they're still getting shit together and that's why he's not here this week we love him jason everybody down there thank you so fucking much be safe we're with you uh Asheville and you know Storm Strong fuck Helene let's go play some fucking free Warren now this is Warm Bones
keep my fears to myself away from you. All right, metalheads, we are being joined this week by the dudes. And let's just go ahead and say that these last few weeks have been leading up to today, which is the start of the big goddamn metal show. Hell yeah. Fuck at Mad yeah. Bar tonight and tomorrow. We've got the dudes in free Warren here making their return to the stage at the big goddamn metal show. Dudes, what's going on? What's happening? Oh, what's happening? Going on? Good. Good to see you. Hell yeah, dudes. Uh, so let's go through and introduce because as we can see, Marilyn Monroe behind and a couple of stickered up acoustic guitars, which <laughs> I think is always <laughs> rad as hell. Yeah. Uh, so so who are we talking to tonight? I'm, well, oh, go ahead. I'm Brad, I'm the vocalist. I'm Braden, I'm the bass player. I'm Garrett, I'm the drummer. I'm Tristan, the guitars. I, I was really beginning to wonder if there was another B B name coming in. So, <laughs> I mean, because it's like B B, uh, uh, and then and then here's Garrett, <laughs> dudes. Like the what? For first off, how the fuck are you? Really good, awesome, dude. Really busy. Yeah, busy is yeah. gonna be all. The Things time. are looking up though. <laughs> Right, Listen. right, right, right. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I had a boss one time, and I don't know if you've listened to any previous episodes of the show or not, but um, the the thing about it is, is this is more or less like a conversation-based uh, podcast, okay? Yeah, what, yeah. I, what I call it, it's a, it's a conversation-based interview uh, show. Absolutely. Yeah. And basically... You know, I had a boss, so this is the, the 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 genesis of this story here. And when I hired in, he told me that it was just like, you know, we we tend to slow down around October. And this was like in February. He's like, we're gonna get really busy in the summer, but we're we'll slow down about October. And that was in 2007. And I don't think I've ever slowed down since. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. That's so, great. Yeah. That's the that's the thing that's out there these days. What's 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 insane? So, um, <clears throat> big goddamn metal show. Fucking free Warren coming back to the stage for the first mm -hmm. time in in what uh four right. years. Oh yeah, Damn, yeah. It's, it's been, been a lot. <laughs> Four years, yeah. Inch, wow. I mean, that's a that's a bit of that's a bit of time. Like, yeah. So so tell everybody out in Metal Forge Land about Free Warren and why this is the return show. Uh, we started in 2019 uh, when I met these two in uh, in high school, and uh, I met Braden first. Yes, right. Yeah, and uh, we started getting together and just playing random tunes, little acoustic stuff, cover tunes. And then it, all of a sudden it just became super serious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were like, let's and, do original shit. <laughs> yeah. And, but it was, so, it was a lot of fun and we realized how, how good we do with each other. And we've just like spent so much time writing all the music that we can. And we had some shows in, in uh, 2020 uh that kind of got us out there a little bit and bred us into that this is what it's going to be and we're all still really hungry for it but we've we've spent the last four years since then doing our homework doing yeah doing lots of homework writing more stuff recording stuff uh getting our 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 head screwed on straight basically getting all of our ducks in a row so this is this return shows a really big moment for us absolutely which you know, uh, based on the 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 first single release, um, you know that it, it it's something to me. Like when you can have, when you can come out, and then just the world changed. Yeah. Right at the beginning of you all, uh, right at the beginning of, uh, of the band. And when it comes to being able to get together finally and say, you know what, this is what, this is proper return show. 
you know, how does that, how does that really affect you? You know, because obviously we're, we're metalheads, we're creature of habit. We, 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 we get that chip on our shoulder if something doesn't go right. And we're just like, I gotta do better. I've got to fucking do this better. So whenever, you know, whatever had happened before, because I, if I'm not mistaken, I, I believe Garrett, you had told me before that, um, that the that the show was the the shows that you all had played towards the beginning of the career were not really things that you had been necessarily too proud of. That this was kind of like a real proper, like yeah, yeah, yeah. show. I, I I would still say that's true. The we we did three shows uh, as a very new fresh band back then. That was back in 2020, and those three shows we I mean we we were very happy to do them and we played them with pride for sure. Um, it was, we were just so fresh with each yeah. other. Yeah. We like were we very had, to it. we had only practiced together like what a few times mm-hmm. and yeah. then we went yeah. out and started playing these shows. So yeah. And they That's were, always was... the fun part, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it <was> and you're <laughs> flying off your, off the seat of your pants and you're, you know, yeah. you, you when you don't really know the songs like you probably should, isn't that the, <laughs> yeah, isn't that right. like the? Exactly. <laughs> Let's just go. Who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah. but just it, wing it. It taught us. It taught us a lot about that kind of side of the coin and a lot about each other too. Yeah. So oh, we went sure. home, You know, we went back and said, "Man, we gotta we gotta work on some stuff." Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Now, um, not ne- not necessarily being like anything like thrash or or death metal or or hardcore <laughs> anything like that but uh what i would consider uh free warren would be something in the vein of like the new wave of traditional heavy metal meets new wave of american heavy metal definitely got the american metal in there yeah yeah and that's- yeah um uh, so with having such a diverse sound in with metal having so many diverse sounds, I should say, how yeah. do you focus on, you know, keeping tried and true to what you want to do as a band? Because it's easy to to like pick from here and pick from here and pick from there. But when it when that amalgamation happens, how does that happen with Free Warren? Well, we we try to just we try to to write and for ourselves, write and play for ourselves. And yeah, it's like we don't think about what somebody wants to hear. It's just what what we come up with and what sounds good to us. And a lot of stuff is actually written on acoustics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And then it's, you know, brought to the it gets amped table. up like tenfold. Yeah. Yeah. The, the... Of course, it changes once you start amping it up yeah yeah i think the secret formula really is is that i'm more the metal guy of the band and then you've got like the 60s guy and the punk the 90s guy the punk guy like there's actually i i I mean only on certain songs could you really consider us a metal you know outfit whereas more it's true it's it's like i think anything I think anything with heavy, even like lyrical content is is metal to me. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's definitely really hard rock. That's a good point. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So, for example, like uh, I always think and and I always sit there and say, I don't care if it it, who it is. It could be Hank Williams Sr. (laughs) Uh, You take like the Lost Highway uh, song of his. That's metal as fuck. it's all about it's all about the perception uh, of sure. like heavy what i say the metal forge is about it's about heavy culture more than anything uh, yeah. and yeah. whether yeah. you know because we all live hardcore lives of whether yeah. you know it's all metal or not it's it's you know we brush up against it enough in the day that it's it's still a part of everybody's life so with that, when when you all are writing and things come out to uh, say, if things were written mostly on acoustic, which I I love completely, because I'm that person too. I'll pick up the acoustic before I'll pick up an electric, mm-hmm. and yeah. if it if it flows well from 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 the flat top, then mm-hmm. I know. 
So is that how yeah. is that how you all are as well? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we got Mister. I mean, he's the he's the big singer songwriter, the vocalist. You know? Yeah. So yeah, he'll like lay. He just always lays like a really good foundation <laughs> of stuff, and then it's like if you know a song, if you can just pick up a, I don't know, acoustic is about as real as you can get. Like when it comes to guitar or almost any instrument, very it, pure. It, it's just straight from it's straight wood and strings and sound so i just mm -hmm. think if you know you yeah. can have a good sounding song on a just that block of wood you know it'll you know great. it'll sound good you can you can make it something epic on like a bit a big band setting so i think that's like one oh of the for sure things. oh you know? no i totally agree with that and you know i i've always told people that you know the especially in like the metal deal because there's so many bands out there that are just like oh acoustic no that no <laughs> fuck that and yeah. i've always i've so like i've always enjoyed like the unplugged series oh, uh, and really storytellers yes. yeah yeah so yeah, sure. like i totally love the idea of taking like a metal setting and making like a a storyteller's thing out of it and that was the original genesis of the metal forge believe it or not was wow. to to have people uh do like unplugged sets and and stuff which i thought would be kind of cool too bad like nobody really Nobody really <laughs> thought so. Yeah. We we made it about a month and and we were just like, yeah, maybe we should start having people play electric. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Nobody seems to like the acoustic thing. Well, hey man, um, if you ever want to bring it back, we we'll can bring it. Back. We'll, we'll bring it back. <laughs> we'll bring yes. it back. We, we have no beef with that. We'll do both. Uh, we'll an, do an evening with free Warren uh, <laughs> unplugged storyteller. Yeah. Yes, dude. We're yeah. all you're you're all gonna play acoustic, uh, even the bass, and then yes, it's gonna sir. be yep. as hell. You were gonna sit on stools. It's gonna be like yeah. the Eagles, like hell freezes. Yeah, the Eagles. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 yes, 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 yes. And I do have an acoustic bass. Yeah. And I yeah. hey, hey, <laughs> I've got one too, actually. Oh hell uh, yeah! Killer. So obviously, with writing and things coming up on acoustic and, and so on and so forth. But when it comes to actually sitting down and writing songs, um, like, cause I know Garrett plays guitar as well. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, and actually I think Garrett's an amazing guitar player, as I should yeah. say, but, oh, yeah. but I also want to know player. is, so when you're sitting there and you're coming up with, with, uh, doing when you're writing, does do you all sit down and pick up the guitar and play together, or is it like, hey, this would be a cool drum beat, or or do you leave the writing to them? Um, it's all of that. It's it, it's, uh, it it's, depends. Sometimes I write the, you know, I write poems and turn them into songs, and I write the 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 words first, and sometimes I'll write the. Uh, uh, figure out some good acoustic chords first and, and do the music first. And with the band, yeah, kind of whoever's just messing around and comes up with something, they'll bring it to the band and then Garrett will just do what he it's does. Super sporadic. Like we all, yeah, we all write, we all play guitar actually, all of us do. So yeah. a lot, most of our stuff is written from the guitar first. No matter, like definitely, yeah. definitely yeah. most of it is written from the guitar first. Cause Brayden, he plays the bass, but he actually writes on the guitar. Same. And, yeah. and then I get he'll, that. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And he'll always, he's the riff master over here. Him and Garrett are the riff masters. So, like, Brayden will come up with a riff and then just he takes it right to Garrett. But it's funny because Brayden will like write the whole song out and then he's already got the bass part. So then all of a sudden I'll like show up to practice and they're like jamming this rhythm section. And I'm like, what is that dude? <laughs> like, where did yeah. that come? <laughs> That's how that happens. A lot of the time, a lot, a lot of the time we, it's like almost it's, it's not fleshed out, but the skeleton of the song is brought in by whoever wrote that right, singularly. Yeah. And then we'll sure. all four get together and we'll say, what transitions are we doing? What fills are we doing? Cause we all match each other. That's where we yeah. all sync up so yeah it's just kind of sporadic like me i'm always i've always got the solo to the song done before i have like <laughs> half the chords put together yeah, i that's feel true. like yeah. i always got like the the main guitar solo and then i'm like oh i got this little riff for chord progression and then i kind of 
I'll take it to him for like lyrics or I'll take it to him for the beat and just to kind and of we got a lot of solos going yeah, on. Yeah. That, now warm so, bones don't as much, but all of our other songs. All of these stuff. Just, just wait. <laughs> okay, so just I do wait. have to ask <laughs> about something here. With uh with being uh with all of you being guitar players, uh obviously um I I don't know personally, but I, I assume you're all uh similar on on your abilities because you're you're all playing together nobody is like just way outshines each other but when it comes to like uh writing solos i had this thing with a guitar player one time who absolutely hated soloing over a a, a verse riff or a chorus riff it had to be a completely new riff under oh, a solo no. what? have you all ever no. been like that no no like, <laughs> it's like opposite. yeah but we could totally change the key here and do the solo <laughs> yeah well like this and and just like do and and completely work the song over a different way it's like yeah. wow you know i never thought that, of that. is cool stuff yeah. we're actually dabbling into that a little bit with some of the, a couple of these new yeah songs. we got some <clears throat> couple new songs we've been working on i have like this heavy riff that we've been working on lately and me and Garrett are like, oh, we should uh, speed up the tempo right here, and then then like maybe do a, maybe do a key change. Yeah, so, like, yeah. We're, we're starting to dab, but like honestly, most of the songs that we have completed, we just like we totally just take the verse and the chorus. I don't know, it just yeah. it just works. Yeah. I don't yeah, know, like except or yeah. King Diamond, all of them. Like, yeah, it sounds so good when they do it. Pre chorus, sure, sure. chorus verse, yeah. pre chorus, chorus. I'll, I might throw an extra Bridge. rhythm on it that's a little different. Like we yeah. have a, I know a song like where it's like the same chords, but I, I change the percussive. Aspect a lot of times, it's just a different, pl different play style. Yeah, just yeah. change, kind of alter the new tape, different play style. Go change, crazy. Yeah. change the rhythm pattern or a lot of rhythm pattern change. I'll change, I'll change anything. the bass line behind it or something. I'll change the bass. So and, that's wild. I, and, I or use it use a different drum beat, things like that. A lot of our songs are just like two to five chords at most. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the hey, I mean, but you know, that there's something about that though, that it, it, it doesn't have to be all crazy prog either. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, crazy time signatures and and crazy chord progressions. Yeah. And, you know, when you're getting the, you know, that, yeah. that yeah. little tap over the neck thing, yeah. you don't have to do that. <laughs> Whipping some polyphia out over yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which, I mean, and, and those people have their, yeah. exactly. oh, have their place. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. They have their place. like that. And and yeah, like I love watching bands like that because it's like, wow, man, it's yeah, like I'll never be able to play that. It, it, me like, too. <laughs> I'm I'm impressed by people who can. Me too. And, yeah, yeah. I love watching them, but it's just never something that like I. Yeah, I it's just, never in my reality to be. It's able not to in my root. It's not in my yeah. roots either. Like you know, this uh, like uh, Brad's my dad, and then Brayden's my brother. So we we're family and then garrett's our adopted brother yeah. it's a big family <laughs> band but uh yeah, there's a curveball so for uh but sure, we just, sure you know dad grew up in the 90s man so it's all just like metallica guns and roses pearl jam now, the, the grunge stuff and it's just like that very like i like what you said about like how metal is more of a culture because like there's obviously bands that are heavier than other bands, but still can sure. sh can still shed some of that same attitude. Like, I don't think like Alice in Chains yeah. is a grunge band, but they're just as metal sometimes as like Pantera. Yeah. For sure. yeah. It's oh, like, no, absolutely. Be, there's yeah. something about like their, like you said, the lyrical yeah, content, sure. this, this, this singing from a feeling and emotion. And heavy like, shit. And then they do yeah. write like heavy riffs. And then, but even some of their, really soft oh, stuff yeah. nutshells the heaviest yeah. shit i ever dude like nutshell yeah. some of the darkest <laughs> like uh, feely down thing. in a hole dude yeah, yeah. yeah. That that shit just can, like, especially when you get the unplugged version yeah, or it's like exactly. longer and it has like the the weird like the cool like rapping guitar parts with yes, it yes yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I just Tap think you made a, yeah <laughs> i just think you made a great point like metal metal really is like a it's a it's a 
It's a feeling. Way of it's, life. It, it's an emotion. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's not Absolutely. just a sound. Yeah. I mean, there is a sound to it, but it's it's just it's like, not just a genre. It, Nirvana. It's bigger than that. Nirvana has some of like the most catchy poppy songs on the radio back in the 90s but they're they're metal too because they just jam like it's it just rocks it's a it's the feeling it's, it's the, the attitude the attitude and the that's what it's all about you know you know depends. you mentioned that and uh the nirvana thing and what was wild about them is like when you there was a book that i had it was like the complete studio recordings uh catalog of nirvana yeah. And what it did is it went through every version of a release that they had. Oh, whether wow, or not. Cool. So say like the original run of like bleach on the independent deal. And yeah. then they had the, the re-release version and you had the special edition versions and the vinyl versions and the CDs and this print of this version, et cetera. And they would go in and talk about like, they would have like the notes from from like Kurt's journals and and stuff, and he had he was super meticulous. Like when it came to recording, he knew exactly the cost of everything that he was doing. Wow! So he knew, like he they knew that they weren't like frivolous frivolously spending money on wow. or getting screwed. Like yeah, he knew like everything. He had had it mapped out, which is wild as hell that that other people do that too. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. all right, I know this, song, it's going to be uh 36 minutes ish. This is the idea that I have. That sounds like me. Yeah. yeah. The budgeter and the, the business. That man. Definitely I'm like, everything. Yep. I totally get it. I'm always uh, the man so, with the plan. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you, you have, you have to have somebody in the band to be that guy. Because, you know, every, everybody has their designated role. Uh, you're all managers right now yeah. until, you know, until managing management comes along, they say you're yeah, all yeah. supposed to, you know, spend, spend your time at the merch table, spend your yep. time out talking to the people and hanging exactly. out and, and doing the, doing the thing and all the stuff. So as now we're here for the weekend of the re-debut uh, at the big goddamn metal show, now that the weekend's over, what are you all interested in, in doing going into 2025? We got more stuff coming along. <laughs> we, got, we can't give too much away about it, but we're going way bigger. It's yeah. going to get big. It's just going to we're just gonna keep pushing, man. Uh, We're gonna keep trying to top ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> that's our that's our goal is to just keep topping ourselves, honestly, and playing live a lot. We're we're really excited for the show, the show, Hell yeah. and uh, starting to play Absolutely. live more and just touring and just like you said, talking to fans and just. So we're looking at the album. We're looking at possibly doing some small some 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 touring. Yeah, yeah, you pretty, could say that pretty yeah. much. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. to, you know, I could, I could say that. I could say that, but you, could you? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, totally. I, I, I dig. And, you know, because of uh, contractual obligations and, and by the times this is released, might not be able to, to confirm yet or deny uh, anything. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You never know Definitely. what could happen, but. Yeah. That's G14 classified. <laughs> no, That's exactly kidding. right. We're not we're no, not ta talking about anything here. Big uh, pl plans though. We're very excited for what's to come next. Uh, uh where's the uh hang on. Uh survey says uh big <laughs> news coming soon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> we're really funny. excited to to just bring people the next best thing all the you time. You can be sure to hear new music from us every couple months though yeah. sure that's and and that's awesome because we live in a time where i don't necessarily know if the album game is is something that should is going to continue i saw a post here a while back from uh cody and hatriot and uh cody souza and he had said something about experience uh, go out and experience these bands today because we're going to have what's going to be called the great fall off. 
in metal and and just music in general and and i think even i think it's going to be the great fall off of everything because we're going to start having these stars that have been you know in the in the spotlight the last 50 60 years dying off you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. the clint eastwoods and yeah. in the mo- in the film scenes yeah. uh the yeah. sam elliott's and stuff like that and in the music scenes you're going to see start these people like uh kiss and metallica mm-hmm. and robert yeah. plant they're all getting yeah. old and robert yeah. yeah robert plant yeah absolutely jimmy page these guys yeah, they're just yeah. gonna start going you know they're gonna start dying off and yeah. it's sad to think that it you is. know we live in a world like i said without lemmy even oh yeah and yeah, just, you uh, know <clears throat> because everybody thought that he would be the last thing on earth <laughs> Seriously, uh, yeah. he almost but, was <laughs> But, you know, and it and it's a thing that I do think is going to happen. You know, you're going to get all these these people who are either, A, going to retire or pass, and it's just going to be, who's going to come up next? Who's this yeah. next crop of of either heavy musician or, or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. And that is where I see bands like Free Warren and Sanhedrin and yeah, Ice yeah. Howl and yeah. Hunt. Yeah. And and bands like that the that are gonna be the next you know uh, Judas Priests and Absolutely. and people like that yeah, yeah I I like, sure hope so yeah and it is it is crazy that you bring that up like look at Aerosmith they just retired from the stage like a month ago you, like, like yeah and, and it was That's all crazy. because of a of a vocal issue yeah yeah yeah. yeah. And it's you just know, they're, they're just I don't a band. Think the Stones are going to be around. I much think of the Stones. Are, how are they still alive? They're just getting going for crazy. Well, look, look how but, many that are already gone. The Doors. I, know, I mean, but, I mean, yeah, they haven't. They hadn't but, played a show since uh, 1971. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, they did do that. They did do that storytellers thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I will say that they did do that storytellers thing where they had. Uh, Scott Weiland, Travis oh, Lee. Yeah. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Think of Scott I think Weiland Scott Stapp was on one of them. Oh, yeah. It's creepy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they did do that thing where they had different vocalists come in and they did yeah. weird versions of Doors songs. I yeah. do remember that. So yeah. That yeah. maybe they haven't played a show in 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I do hope, like you're saying, <laughs> yeah. I hope people start giving... Um, I mean, I think it's happening a little bit because I think people are realizing like all oh, these favorite, these great legends that we all grew up with and were influenced by like time, just the clock keeps ticking. And, you know, a lot of them are just have either moved on with their lives and don't really perform anymore or they're retired and they're retiring or they just can't do it anymore. Sure. Or, or they're passing. So I mean, I always, Ozzy even. Yeah, yeah exactly. Man. Yeah, I'm uh, always saying like I hope people start. I that's why lately I've been trying to like find the new bands that are. Oh yeah. Out and just, Especially like, in 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 this in 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 our genre in yeah. rock and metal. I mean, it takes so much, you know, energy that, and just like really, it, it, like you have to c- try to keep up, you know. So age can really take a toll if if it gets too much and you know people get health conditions and it's a tough genre it's very demanding you know sure yeah. to perform and stuff even no. for even for a young guy like me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i shouldn't complain too much <laughs> no no there. you're absolutely right it is a it is a tough gig uh, you know when you're you can't you you realize that it is the thing that you have to you do have to maintain and, you know, being up all night smoking and drinking and, yeah. and doing all this. And then you got to get up at nine in the morning to yeah. do, to get on the, on the road to the next gig. Yeah. You can't, you yeah. can't, you realize that you can't be doing all that, that you have to work it out. Yeah. So hell yeah. So before we uh, go today, obviously, you know, we've got more stuff to, uh, to cover here because we've got derailed. Which oh, we're yeah. gonna switch over to derailed is five random questions about you all as people, and this will be fun because I haven't I haven't done a good group derailed for a while. Okay, 
I'm excited. We try our best. Heck do yeah. What do you geek out about? Uh, superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Marvel. Uh, Marvel who, and, who, and DC. <laughs> nice. All right. So give give me your favorite Marvel. Oh man. That's oh, we're gonna do. Oh, I think I just started something here. <laughs> How does one base? How does one base their favorite superhero? Oh, wow! Yeah. Is it based on physical prowess? Is yes. it based on yeah? Ah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. this that that's a great question. Oof, that is a. I'd have to say for me, my favorite Marvel character would have to either growing up it was always Spider Man and Wolverine for sure. Sure. For me. It was just those two were like the dude. I grew me. up with the clone saga, so <laughs> oh, yeah. that's good. Too. Yeah, I yeah. So dude, I geek out on some Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I rip. geek out. I, I, I mean, the old. I got the old arcade system part that, one. That's Hell a big, yes. yeah! In my garage, yeah. yeah. I geek on that thing like three times a week. Yeah, <laughs> Hell and I got I, yes. I got it for a gift like two years ago, and I, I just it's three times a week. I got to play it. Because it takes Dude. me back to when I was like 13. And you're yeah. playing jamming the quarters in the arcade machine. Yeah. Totally, yeah. totally there. So this is this is kind of a cool episode for me because I feel like I am the bridge of the two generations here. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm in you I, are, I, yeah. I'm in my early 40s right now. Yeah. And you know, I know Garrett, you're in your what, early 20s? All three of us, actually. Yeah, all three yeah, of all you three are in your us, early twenties. Yeah. Yeah. And and how old are you are you? Forty-five. Yeah. So say okay, so we're closer in the same yeah. to the same yeah. age then. Okay, so uh yeah, I totally get the the more combat. I'd they... love to have that cabinet. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just had a birthday, he September fourteenth. Oh, oh, forty five well, is the new twenty five. I'm still alive. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hell you. yeah. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. We're, we're super geeks, man. Yeah. It's, it's vid- besides music. I mean, music's the first love always, but movies and video games, Evil Dead and comic books. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're just super. See, I trendy. show yeah, these. Man. I show these guys. We're Evil super yeah. geeks, too. Dude. They live. We love all the good films. films. That's yeah, such. Yeah, man. <laughs> we love it all. Man. That's such a great question because I'm such a. We're geek. such fans. We're such we're geeks. I'm geeks about. I'm a geek Every about so geek. much. Yeah. I'm a. I'm a geek when it comes. To, I love all for art i like movies video games and music transformers and... super mario yeah yeah <laughs> like, god of war <laughs> i've been geeking ninja on turtles. god of war. ninja and turtles <laughs> <laughs> the ninja turtles rule man oh, yeah. we could just go for dude days. i'm a masters of the universe fan so oh, yeah yeah, 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 dude, I yeah. Too, yeah. Uh, so Here's something with that, and and with with the geek out, the the great geek out of life and everything, and and as you yeah. as as uh was just said that being a fan of everything of of all art, when was a specific turning point in your life? Um, I for me, I I was about uh twelve years old. I always loved music growing up because all my parents would play in the car. Literally, and I'm not joking. Iron Maiden and Dream Theater and like Cypress Hill and the police, like all these odd. <laughs> so I didn't grow up listening to the radio, but I had this deep love of this music. But as I was a kid and a preteen and a teen, I was really into video games. And back in that day, that was like, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. I wanted to be like a like a Twitch streamer. Yeah. I, wanted to, you know, like I wanted to play video games and make yeah, a living dude. off of it. And, uh, and, uh, one day my dad, actually, I guess I can credit him for sparking that love of me, like going to play music and write my own music instead of just Same. enjoying listening to it. Mm-hmm. But we, we, I, I found some of his CDs one day and, uh, he, he came in the room and he's like, oh, you're looking at these CDs and he fishes out two specific CDs. Uh, and, and Mark, you'll know these, he, he fished out, uh, Necroticism by Carcass. Mm-hmm. and um harmony corruption by napalm death and he said whatever you go listen to next listen to these and those albums i know it sounds so true but the, those albums changed my life oh, forever man. and that's like that is the reason i was like video games are nothing to me yeah so. <laughs> and the funny thing is is i know your dad 
And <laughs> I could totally see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Craig's so yeah. funny. Yeah. It's uh, like, so hey, funny because he'll give you those two albums, and then you'll just he'll be sitting by his drums drinking Guinness, listening to like Rush or something. Yeah, the <laughs> Eagles. He'll be listening to like the Eagles. He's so funny, dude. That's I what like it does. Yeah. Dude, he's so hilarious. He's like, here, go listen to this death metal yeah. but then i'm gonna chill back and listen to like yeah, listen leonard to skinner yeah. Yeah. To the lone wolf McC- uh, <laughs> he's so fun <laughs> oh, he's awesome. uh so what about Vulture. the rest of you all when was it uh when was a specific turning point in your life i think for me it was probably when i was like 15 i started singing and and playing more like I, I got a bass guitar when I was like 15 and it didn't work out too much and went more towards the acoustic. But I grew up on uh, movies and art and music since I was a little kid. So my father had like jam sessions all the time. And I think the turning point was in my teen years and that was the 90s. <laughs> and that's when I my father was like country musician yeah grandpa was a blue and boy. and i was like in the 90s i just it was the grunge scene yeah but of course i always loved the old bands like zeppelin and the uh, doors Danzig, sabbath yeah sabbath yeah uh koreans clearwater you gotta love them they were a big yeah. they're, they're a big revival influence. or revisited oh yeah dude that's only good. revival only revival big <laughs> influence <laughs> only revival, only revival. <laughs> Yeah, so mine obviously just kind of stems off of dad's. I actually, I actually, as a kid, I mean, I'm you wanted to be a basketball. Yeah, (laughs) that's true. I'm kind of the black black sheep in the music world. Uh, I would like see. I didn't start with the roots as hard. Like when I was super young, I mean, I was super into like comic books and video games and stuff. I was a big video game guy, and then I, I dad would show me rock. But I also had I also spent a lot of time with my mom too, and she would just listen to the radio. So I kind of had the pop aspect too a little bit. Uh Braden took more of the liking to the rock at first. And then um I kind of <clears throat> got into sports for a little while. He was then, a young bebopper. Yeah. What were you like 14? <laughs> I was kind of like super super young. I was kind of like your typical preppy like radio listener, like. Just, he said, Dad, should I try it for basketball? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, Well, you're not that tall. So <laughs> then you're not that tall. Then I haven't been showing you how to play. <laughs> and so and goes, you play guitar pretty well. What do you really love? Follow your heart. Gu- yeah. And yeah. yeah so, now it's a killer lead guitar. Player. So before that, it was about 13 going on 14. Um, you know, grandpa played music, dad and all the uncles play music, the whole family's playing music. I kind of I kind of tried to steer away from it for a while, I think, because the whole family did it. And I think I was trying to find something different that I was good at, which it's just funny because it's inevitable, you know, it's just things work out inevitably, you know. And then I just remember I was like, it's kind of catching on. Like I heard a Nirvana song that I liked and I, I liked some, I remember liking Seether and Shine Down a lot growing up because dad would play him and he'd play like Pearl Jam and stuff. But, um, so I liked the music, but I just had, wasn't like into it yet. And then 13 going on 14, I kind of wanted to learn some guitar a little bit and then press, a, press some girls. <laughs> I, that's just straight up. The, straight yeah. up. The reason I like learned guitar was to like impress chicks. Ser- <laughs> Serenation. And then, um, and then he discovered drop D. <laughs> yeah, and then I don't know. I just like, I just figured it. And I, I, I asked him to teach me this like love song or uh, broken by C there. I'm like, dad, teach me this song so I can like impress a girl. And he was like, then he just takes it and he starts showing me power chords. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll just start here. And then he didn't even show me any major chords. He just went straight. He's like, here's the F, here's the G. It just goes up and down the line. Is like, oh, here's all the chords. And then figured that out. And I just started, then I was kind of taking a liking to Nirvana and started learning all their stuff. And then I just like right from there, Deeper, I, I just kind of had a naturality. Then you just kept jumping from the next band to yeah, the next I just, band. Yeah, I had a natural band. act for it. I picked it up super fast and yeah i never would have thought it would have happened i had i thought i had no musical talent whatsoever and then it just kind of happened and then yep yeah, obviously just kept growing in the bands getting into 
Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains and Guns N' Roses. And then once and I found Lynn. Zeppelin, once I found Guns N' Roses, then I was like, that's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to play guitar like Slash. And then I found Jimmy Page and I'm like, yeah, I want to play. I want to rip like these guys do. And it just all started from there. And then I haven't looked back since. I don't. It's all music and art and I could care less about sports nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> sure. No, so. I totally get it. Yeah. Um, it, it It is always interesting how, how people get into music, I think, yeah. because we all have our own individual stories of when we all discovered, like, wait a minute, that's different. What is yeah. that? Yes, Holy absolutely. Yeah. And it's like, then you, and, it, and it's with anything. And I think a lot of today's, um, a lot of today's youth as you all are have have more often than not the more common denominator of band that is the gateway uh the gateway drug into music is nirvana it seems like yeah you know? yeah it's wicked and yeah, it's weird they just well it was for me it was the doors <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> the but no yeah no no you're totally we right, love uh, and, and, and it, mine was black sabbath so yeah, oh, yeah. i totally get what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i think we're older. i think it's weird <laughs> you're I feel, talking about these guys i feel yeah. like when I, <laughs> yeah, I feel like when i started playing guitar maybe i maybe i was just too young to notice before but i do feel like there was a shift in like you know youtube just started pumping out like all these kid like okay so you could like learn guitar on youtube that's what i learned guitar from i never took mm -hmm. lessons i just learned what dad taught me and my uncles and my grandpa but uh just watched a lot of youtube videos because all these guitar people are on there like covering solos and i would just watch a lot of live performances of bands and but i think there was like a shift at that point when i started playing guitar yeah uh, I just think a lot of kids were getting back into that stuff. Like rock and roll is becoming a it's like a cultural thing. I think rock and roll is becoming a cool thing because I think, I guess all the kids my age and me included, like our dads just started showing us all these bands. Like we had grown up on all this pop and rap coming out. That was popular. You know, it's all Drake and Taylor. Oh Swift yeah. And in the, in the, in the early to, and, and Brad, you could probably attest to this. Uh, from about 99 to about 09 that's pretty much all music was 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 synth pop and yeah, like yeah. Mm -hmm. rap yeah yeah the it's a the, sad the, thing yeah <laughs> yeah like the 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 dis the ultra disney inspired boy yeah. band yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. was in that was in that time frame and and the, but it also had on the rock and metal world, you know, you also had bands that come out in that time, like Kings of Leon, and yeah, yeah that is true, you know, right. and System the Black Keys and Franz Ferdinand. Oh yeah, you know, all the older. Even, well, System was even System was in the nineties. You know, they actually are a little older. Yeah, than, they, yeah. they, they kind they of were in the er, with... they were in the early to mid nineties as yeah. a band. Really? I remember yeah. seeing yeah. them before they were even before Toxicity. And, and yeah, see, happened. Toxicity Dang. is not their first record. No, they had a record before that in I like '97 or something. But I know what you're saying, Mark. Yeah, all the but, alternative. But yeah, a lot of that white stripes the were coming out. Yeah, and a lot of them guys. Uh, and, yeah. Um, I guess they just carried on through the 2000s. They did for sure. And like mm -hmm. Shine, Shine Down and Seether, they just carried on. <clears throat> no, yeah. uh, good thing when i started playing guitar i just felt like there was a lot of guys i think youtube was popping off all of a sudden youtuber youtubing became a thing so i think and then mm -hmm. you had you just had all these old dudes yeah. on we, youtube we did have to just play that guitar or pay for lessons yeah, yeah. like <laughs> the youtube was my dad there. always yeah said, you guys had it harder yeah i, feel, yeah. Yeah. You guys, guys, hard. I remember guys... going to take lessons from from a guy yeah. yeah yeah see now they're just free on youtube it's crazy yeah. you know sure obviously you still gotta uh, put you in the time a, but i get the 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 musician <laughs> ads yeah. all the time all the hey, time it's the time. like look i gave up when ultimate guitar i found out ultimate guitar tabs weren't accurate so i gave up i said i'm gonna be a drummer because yeah, i can't yeah. ah, come on now it's so like, I, I get the thing i get the thing in mind where it's always the next ad it says hey you want to jam like you're in Metallica? 
Well, what yeah, the best way to do it <laughs> is to play with yeah, us. Dude, yeah. Yeah. Like I've seen that ad so many times, you know, it's yeah. like, oh, oh my gosh. Just like, James, no, Stop. I don't want to play my like big, you anymore. No, I want to play <laughs> like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. I had to come to that realization because my big thing was, hey, everybody, what's up, guys? It's Marty Schwartz here. Like, that's where I learned how to play is freaking Marty, <laughs> Marty, Schwartz, Schwartz, Marty Schwartz and, okay, like, well. Carl Brown on YouTube and stuff. Like, they're doing all these lessons. That's but, really how we learned how to play. Guitar. But eventually, like, yeah. I, I had to go. Dad helped me out with the originality. I, 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 I always I, encouraged them. I finally to, was like, yeah. I'm gonna I say. said, you, you want to be like them guys that you like so much, then you got to write your own music. Yeah, exactly. I Something. agree with that 100%. Yes. Yeah. And you know, there's money in cover bands. There is, but is there satisfaction in it? Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. And everybody <laughs> loves a good cover, man. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm, I don't down covers. There's some of the some of the greatest songs ever are covers and stuff. Oh yeah, but, it, but it's just like you gotta like. There's gotta be that originality. You too. don't want to make your like, entire life off, off of, of somebody else's. You, you, just, yeah, you don't, don't have identity. Like you can do things like that for sure. You just probably you, you just don't want it to that. That's it. Like yeah. that's your peak. Yeah, that's I why I don't understand it. tribute bands. Yeah, I don't. I hate them. I don't. I, I can't em. get lost. I think any <laughs> any. <laughs> Yeah. I think I think that's a pretty Get unanimous lost. thing of against me uh original musicians is we all hate tribute bands. Yes, yeah. we do. Even I mean, I... even the people who are in tribute bands and original bands still hate doing they they <laughs> yeah, do the tribute yeah, band yeah. for the for the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is true. it's that's where the and it's crazy that that's where the money is. I, I do and I I don't blame people for being in it. Like some people don't want to be an original musician. They just, they just want to play their favorite songs and have fun. And I, and I get it, but, and I don't blame them for going where the money goes. Cause it is kind of sad though. Nowadays, it's like, how can tribute bands make more money than an original band? And I feel like that's a problem yeah. with the audience. Like, they, like we were so like you're yeah. going back to the point you made about like old bands kind of coming to their end and we need to start bringing the new guys up and it's like yeah mm. like pass the torch on people need to like get off of like and don't get me wrong i love van halen i love led zeppelin i love the, these guys and influenced me to do what we do but it's like they were who they were and people gave them a chance and it's like they would have never been who they were if people hadn't supported them and who they are and you know, They're pieces of and now you got Halo. now you got more people going to a tribute Van Halen show than going to see like an original band, and it's just like it doesn't make any. Yeah, sense. you got more people going to a tribute show for Van Halen than you actually have going to see Wolfgang Van Halen. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, that's sad. That's sad. Wolfgang, <laughs> Wolfgang so is awesome, good. dude. He's I, like man, he's, and I don't. I'm no disrespect to Eddie. Rest in peace. But he's just as. I mean, he's just as talented as his he dad is. ever and, was. And it's dude. insanely. He's so good. You know, and like, and that's the thing, too. We're also, like, take, for example, they just recently uh, played in, in Louisville, mm -hmm. uh, Bastardane and Otto. And Otto, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah at, they uh, just Zanzibar recent, Yeah, at something. Zanzibar, they just recently played. And the thing about it is, is uh, those are both the sons of james hetfield and rob trujillo's bands yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah and obviously both of them had opened for metallica on the recent tour but because hey why not because it's well, yeah. dad's band right exactly yeah. that's awesome but like you know they're playing places like z bar and yeah. uh any any like 300 cap venue that you're out there maybe even 100 cap venues who knows you know yeah, yeah. as well as places like i know when they they played on the metallica show they played at the gramercy up in new york and oh, yeah. it's like well shit you know it's like like 3,000 seats or whatever so yeah, yeah. It, it, that's cool um yeah. so Sounds like dad was pretty, pretty awesome growing up. Show you stuff like Evil Dead and things like <laughs> oh, that. Oh, yeah. Um, That's, yeah, dude. Uh, I, you know, I was young and my dad, you know, introduced introduced me to Full Metal Jacket. Oh, yeah. At a yeah. Young age. yeah. And, uh, yeah. 
It's probably why I'm weird now and have a metal show. Um, <laughs> grandpa, it's killer. Grandpa, my grandpa, his dad in the Stephen King movies too, man. He'd just sit oh, and watch them like all the time. We're dunks. geeks yeah. on all the John Carpenter movies. Like he watched all, all that stuff. The horror franchise. Yeah, my, my dad. Like I'm a, a huge hey, too. I'm a I'm a John Carpenter yeah. fan. And yes. I am in a minority here that I actually liked the movie Vampires. I do yeah, too. Yeah, me too. We like yeah. That's a great. lot of people don't yeah. like it. It is a it is a not liked Carpenter film, apparently. What? I, mean, I like I the like Baldwin it. in there, the Baldwin brother. Yeah, with Daniel. <laughs> Daniel yeah. Baldwin. Yeah. I that love how he said he gets a uh, spoiler alert. It only came out in like 1997. Uh <laughs> I love when he gets bit and he yep. like fires off the, the Uzi or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and he like sticks it to his neck <laughs> to carterize the, the, <laughs> the bite. Yeah. It's and awesome, it's, or 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 to his arm or whatever, wherever yeah. she bit him at. Yeah, that's so. And cool, it, it's dude. just like so savage. It's like the the that's heat great. from the barrel is going to cauterize the wound. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what's yeah, am that's... what's amazing about stuff like that is like that's one of the reasons that like we're like Garrett, me and Garrett and Brayden like our best friends. Yeah, and then like why my dad. Took we all like, love yeah. Big just Trouble all... in Little China. Like, and Brandon, oh yes, yeah. 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 So yeah, Big Trouble in Little China. We're all into the same shit. Same Garrett's stuff. into the they same. Live. Shit. They live. They yeah. live. Yeah. I love like, it. My, my dad yeah. showed me all the same. Greg did such a good stuff. job showing him all the same stuff. Like he comes over and he's like, "Yeah, I like Shokazuki," and we're like, "Dude, you yeah. know who Shokazuki the is?" Forest <laughs> movies and yeah. Steven Seagal. Yeah, movie. dude, we're like, and no way. All this off cuff other stuff that that oh, yeah. in the horror room like reanimated and he, uh, the, you bring up steven seagal films man yeah, seagal. You call oh, him he's somebody who really took a fucking u-turn in life like, <laughs> 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 we talk about that we're all the bad stuff yeah bro. dude it's so it's so funny because we just talk about this stuff all the time it's about love. Yeah. well oh, yeah. the, the the question was uh in this is was there ever a movie that you weren't allowed to see, but friends of yours were allowed to see it? Uh, was there anything like that? I was, I think I was the kid that I was allowed to watch the stuff and my friends yeah. weren't. Like I tried, to, <laughs> yeah, I remember like you. being young, I was little yeah. and I tried to show my buddy Bryce the exorcist. And he was <laughs> like, what? And they ain't doing nothing for me, dude. I can't like, and stuff like that. Like I was always, my dad likes all the, the like the B movie kind of horror Sure. And I grew up watching that, namely, and then all these low budget action films from the 80s and, you know, martial arts films and stuff. And my mom would always cover my eyes. My dad would be like, no, it's you can watch. That's, <laughs> that's the it. same thing. So, like, you know, my friends didn't know it. And my grandpa it, so. was the worst like oh yeah oh, my yeah. grandpa would let us watch anything dude oh, like yeah. my grandma and my mom were like oh my you can't be showing them that and he's just like ah, oh, one of my favorite <laughs> one of my so favorite fun. movies of all time that i feel is totally underrated is tango and cash oh <laughs> yes, my god that's great dude, that yeah. i love that movie that's one of yes my favorite. i i yeah. love it Especially when they're hanging fucking yeah. Bri uh, Brian Jones off the fucking building and he's just yeah. fucking yeah. trash talking them. Oh, yeah. like, go ahead, drop me. Drop you guys me. aren't worth a toss. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like, shit is great. It's like, Jesus. And then they put the, the grenade scene. Yeah. That's, it's all, yeah. It's so yeah. awesome. I love that film. I couldn't, I didn't have a piano. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> He oh goes, you had gosh. a chair on this guy's neck? We, yeah. I couldn't find a piano. Find a piano. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I can't think of a movie off the top of my head that I, like, specifically that I that I remember seeing that I wasn't allowed to. I remember my cousin would always try to show me the stuff I wasn't supposed to be watching. <laughs> yeah. But, right. But Grand Theft Auto was a game when I was a kid that I was not allowed to play. That's and, true. Yeah, and my true. grandpa and my cousin would let me play. I would yeah. go over to my cousin's house and his parents let him play it and we'd just be... I'd be like, dude, I'm not allowed to play this. But he's like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> who gives a shit? Who cares, dude? And I'd just be like um, running around GTA San Andreas, like shooting gang members and stuff. It's just, <laughs> it's just the, the first thing that I ever really noticed like that was I had a um, a really close friend in like elementary school, like best friend. And his parents were extremely religious, so they would get edited copies of movies. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Like, and I remember watching the edited copy of Beetlejuice with him. 
Whoa, that's not even that bad of that's a movie. Just, <laughs> yeah, no. that's well, crazy. it's the it's the ad libbed uh, scene where he jumps up and kicks the the tree over and mm. yells, "Nice fucking model!" Yeah. And it yeah. wasn't in the film, and I was just like, "What? It the? wasn't there." And he's like, <laughs> that is about? nutty. Yeah, and he's like, "What are you talking that. about?" And and I did the thing, and like I after that, I don't think I was allowed to stay over at his house anymore. Because <laughs> yeah. I Damn, show, I told him about the scene. Was, he grabs his dick and says, "Nice fucking model, Hong Kong." <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my girl, oh, that's awesome. my I girl loves that, that movie. We just went and saw the second one. It's so good, dude. I don't know, I need to see that. I know I, I haven't seen the it. new one yet. And I... My two when my daughter was two, two and three. Her favorite movie was Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. My grandpa in Jaws. That's why it's like top five movie of all time for me. We just watch Jaws 1 all the time. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, my wife which is actually at, yeah. which is actually kind of a pretty horrifying movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. If you're yeah, living, it, like, it is pretty, it is pretty uh, uh you know, I get it. Yeah. yeah, like if you're, you're little, when you're like, younger, it like scares the shit out of you. Like you're like, well, I don't want to go in the water anymore. Yeah, I I like that film because I am an I am like a film nerd. Absolutely, yeah. like yeah. I love like the 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 pull in shot on Brody as as they're yes, coming yeah. in on Brody's oh, face. Yeah. yeah, and and the background is just zooming out and, and you're yes. zooming in on him and it yeah. just looks so amazing. Yeah, oh, so yeah. that's where I like, and and just like the film stock that was used, it looks like a, yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh. It, it it looked to me, it honestly looks like it could be like a somebody's vacation film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nuts. It's also crazy that film, particularly Jaws, uh, part one. If you watch it nowadays, it's so crazy how clear it looks. It's so sure. weird. It well, just... that's because it's remastered. Oh yeah, true, yeah, true. yeah. You it... get like an original DVD print of that. <laughs> yeah, it looks, yeah. Like, it looks like fucking like a a, a VHS transfer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's so funny oh, because yeah. it's from the seventies and it they like are, it's T, like T two and Jurassic oh, Park. Oh, they're yeah. so ahead of their time. Like yeah, all, oh yeah. You, you didn't see all Steven Spielberg films are, yeah. like. Like it's just wow. It's, it's just, just you can watch Terminator Two now, and it's like whoa. It's like it was just made. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah and it's still and it still holds up. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. And I think that's because of the technology that 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 it, that. I mean, you look at Cameron's film right before that, Abyss, and mm -hmm. how they did like the 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 <clears throat> cephalopod or the uh, the whatever the water was and everything, and then they did yeah. the 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 whatever the the the, the alien thing or yeah, whatever yeah. it was yeah you know and then there's that and it's just like wow even that still looks good yeah oh yeah, yeah. very well done well that's because movies and, nowadays are so like generic and it's just back oh, sure. in the, back in the day they actually focused on characters and directing now and don't get me wrong i love superhero movies too and i love action movies but a lot of movies now are just about big blow explosion but scenes they shouldn't just redo some movies shouldn't be redone like yeah. don't redo roadhouse don't touch the crow yes they, yeah they a lot i mean i have yeah. alice's eyes on my arm but yes. not the crows so <laughs> oh, uh, but no totally and i think that with um uh, with the films and everything today, like what you were saying, Tristan was, uh, uh, I think the, the MCU and since Disney had purchased Lu both Lucasfilm and Marvel. Yeah. And the amount of content that has been put out by both in the last decade of, yeah. of purchase have been just there. There almost becomes a, there's too much going on. Yeah, it's yeah, like when you when you when you seriously like when you take like take like the MCU films for example. What are there like 20, 25 of them now? Uh, yeah, man, there's tons. I lost there's, count. I think there's even like yeah, you're, you're right. Like almost 30, 
Almost, oh, yeah. there's like 30 of them, I think. And they started yeah, out and now they're good, starting actually. a new phase and another yeah, new phase. And yeah, another new yeah. Phase. But, but we've been on that one for a minute. Let's go ahead. And this yeah. is the time for last meals. You, you get to pick what would be your last meal. Dino nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just straight oh, up, like, uh, no, I don't, just have you end. ever been to the guy that's taken the frozen dino nugget and ate it? I've done that before. <laughs> fuck yeah. I, I'm, yeah, yeah fuck. It I'm, says pre cooked on the bag. That's yeah. that's what yeah, I'm saying. It's not ready. Yeah, yeah, you're good. They, they got more steps they didn't tell me about, bro. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> dude, that's a tough it's just like, one. Dude, I'll Ooh. eat ravioli out of the can. Oh yeah, yeah. All, all day a cold soup every day for no, lunch. Shit. Dude, I yeah. eat corned beef hash right out of the can. <laughs> Ooh, no, I can't do corned beef hash. <laughs> that That's stuff's dog great. food to me. Yeah, that is. If you, it's better if you cook it. <laughs> that is a great question. I don't know. Yeah. Honestly, my last meal, dude, probably just a a good old breakfast, man, with like some French toast and some scrambled eggs dude right. and like mm. bacon and sausage like the blood of all my enemies <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good that's tough though i love yeah. I'm, i love food dude i just like i like, might have to oh man this is tough. my girl's a good cook so i get blessed with a lot of good meals <laughs> yeah i don't know a whole pizza spaghetti chinese God, you can't go wrong with a Make double cheeseburger, bro. Yeah, McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's, if that was my Smack last man, I'd be totally I love double cheeseburgers. You know, honestly, I love sandwiches. I love subs. I'd have to go with like Jimmy John's or something. Or... Yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Italian nightclub. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. That's, oh. It's, that's great. Almost every It's got time, like 12,000 grams of sodium in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> crunch, yeah. crunch, worth everyone. With it. I love like hoagies and stuff it's worth everyone yeah hell yeah yeah <laughs> hell yeah dudes yeah this can has of been green awesome. beans can of green beans that is my <laughs> green beans <laughs> oh my gosh dude i know a guy who he used to be a bodybuilder and he got shredded and that was his go-to lunch was a can of green beans and tuna fish Oh yeah, that'll do it. I'll you up. Yeah. And that was his like protein based lunch and shit. And and, and he and dude, he was shredded. And oh uh, yeah. <laughs> if you if you want to suffer, but yeah. uh, <laughs> dude, that, I like them big hey, man. He's he's doing oh, the, he's do, doing the prison way. He don't yeah. care. He's going old school. Oh, no it. shit. No yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, so as always, links are listed below. So please give a like, a share, and a follow. Go see these guys when they're playing at the big goddamn metal show this weekend. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. and you know, whenever they announce any other shows, go purchase new music from them, go buy uh merch, do all the things and all the stuff. Dudes, do you all have any shout outs you want to give to anybody today? Shout out to you. Merch shout out to you. <laughs> Um, mo uh, um, and all other bands well, that are going to be at the show. Yeah, I want to shout out. I'm so happy to not be playing with a bunch of tr tribute bands. <laughs> yeah. For real. Yeah, yeah. Around, for if, real. if I ever put a tribute band on a show, I'll quit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, dude. Well, we love um, you for so, it. Shout out to you. So and all excited. Other bands that are going to be at this festi. We're super excited to return to the stage. Shout out to everybody that's been listening to our song. And, Absolutely yeah, for sure. And just keeping up all with the people us, that are liking and following. giving us love man yeah. we, we appreciate love it. you guys like if yeah. we appreciate it so much this is our dream and mad respect to everybody who's gonna be at goddamn metal show the support has and, been amazing uh, and um, then, um shout out to just everybody who's helped us get here um, and to this point you know with the music and like our producer Jordan Westfall and it's been a long time. Mark coming. Owens, our good old engineer, and yeah, yes. for sure. Yeah, just every our our family and friends. We we've, love you. We love you. Guys. We've been Sam, working so. real hard for a yeah, while. Sam, Sam who's our, doing, our guy who does our artwork. Sam Mails doing the artwork, man. Shout Both out to Skybones who did the video. So just everybody who's been helping us get get here. And shout out to our merchandise that we're gonna show at the show. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah, we got mugs. We got <laughs> koozies. We got can coolers and <laughs> and we got pins. <laughs> we got pins yeah. and yeah. tees and hoodies. <laughs> Dude, I, 
I I am a hound for merch, no matter like that's off the beaten path yeah. merch. Uh, oh, yeah. Like yeah. I I bought a tote bag for the first time, Hell, and oh, and yeah, I'm like, nice. you know what? I'm gonna fucking stitch patches to it because oh, I also yeah. buy patches yeah, too. Oh, so yeah. it's like now I've got a battle bag. We got a <laughs> battle yeah. bag. We gotta get some uh, patches, man. We got right. some pins for you though. That's the coolest what you did the the originality when you can take something and put pins and patches on it. That's that's the best. So you can be metal Absolutely. at the grocery store. I, I, I love it. It, you know the customization on the door over here uh, in the yeah. other side of the room. It's all stickered to hell with bands and yeah. and little goofy yeah. stickers like the rat fink and yeah. and home oh, yeah. and, 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 yeah. and shit yeah. like that. Oh yeah. Uh, so I have one final question for today. Yeah. And Garrett knows uh, because he and I have spoke before. We we get uh we get philosophical around here. Uh, from time to time, do. do you think that there are other universes? <laughs> Man, you're always like, as in, like the parallel ones. kind. Wow. Uh, uh, in one sense, yes. In one sense, no. It's weird. I don't know. I'm not big on. I it. just don't know. I'm big on the. I be, I'm big on there is a spiritual world. I believe in God, and I just believe like. Who knows what's out there? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. That's where I see. I'm big I think on there's the a megalodon in the ocean. I believe it. <laughs> you would never know because it's all undiscovered. We've, yeah, you gotta, we, we've never even been to the bottom of our ocean. So we've only discovered how like are we to know what's yeah. out three percent beyond. <laughs> Which is interesting because yeah, we've only we've only discovered you know three uh, percent of the ocean or whatever, and yet now yeah. we have billionaires going into space. Yes. Yeah. It's weird. You know, uh, yes. so yeah. for some recent events, you know, back back in September. Absolutely. I just feel and, that oh sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, no, go ahead. Oh, I just feel like I man, I wouldn't be surprised if there was like a Titanoboa 80 feet snake in the found in the ocean, man, because I just some yeah, dude, there's some, some god down there. God like Greek. Uh, creatures of mythology just in the depths <laughs> the kraken is just in there the hydra and all <laughs> who knows well, and i mean yeah because we don't know who knows i mean we yeah i mean continental drift was a thing and we don't know what's under there yeah, yeah absolutely so, yeah that's where i've come yeah. to the point i don't know much i just you know a lot of undiscovered territory yeah, yeah absolutely. i just know what i know hell yeah I know there's Dude. a lot of stars up there in the sky. Yes. And and you know, and do they all have their own systems, you know? Do they only right. have their own system of planets, each star out there? <clears throat> Who knows? Maybe so. They sure are pretty though. Yeah. It's Very cool. Much so. they, are, to look they are beautiful. <laughs> Dudes, thank you all so much for coming to the Metal Forge this week. This has been killer. I'm looking forward uh, to being able to taking off today and seeing all these awesome fucking bands this weekend on our way out. We're debuting a new song today, aren't we? Yeah, yeah absolutely. We yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, and then, oh yeah. And and you know, I love video. doing that. I love doing that. So please tell everybody what we're going to be listening to. And, and hopefully you're going to be playing it at the show. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. One of our personal favorites, yeah. actually. The song's called Eyes Wide Open. <laughs> Hell we yeah. Put, with we put eyes. Yeah. yeah. We put it oh. right in, in the middle of the set list to to get right in the right in the center there. Right in the food. Nice. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Come see these dudes. Guys, thank you so fucking much. Metal every day. You uh, know, uh, click you, the Mark. links, check these dudes out. Love you guys. Metal every day. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Mark. Eyes wide it. open. Yeah. Eyes yeah. wide open. Yeah. Thanks, like... Mark. Can't wait to see Ice How. <laughs>
they tell themselves The storm is very strong No umbrella of confidence To shelter and fear on the unknown The unknown Unknown Play a scene and watch it grow Help it along Five years in keeping Louisville weird, Electric Ladyland has been there for all your eccentricities. While they do offer the best smoking supplies out on the market today, there's a whole lot more to check out. From ashtrays and blacklight posters, to records, incense and burners, and items to stock your metaphysical supply. They are open from 10 to 10, seven days a week. Located at 2325 Bardstown Road in Louisville, Kentucky, and at electricladyland420.com. Roll out.
Hey Metalheads, you like tattoos? Of course you do. If you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, come on over the bridge to Clarksville, Indiana and get you some ink done at Ageless Art. If ink isn't your thing, they have a piercing studio as well. Visit agelessartclarksville.com to see some frequently asked questions, meet the staff. The shop is open Monday through Thursday, 12 to 8 p.m., Saturdays, 12 to 10 p.m., and Sundays, 12 to 6 p.m., all appointment-only spots. You can set up your appointments by phone at 812-283-1793 or email agelessarttattooandpiercing at gmail.com and someone will get you set up for your first or your next tattoo or piercing. Hey, Metalheads, after going to a Rager, what's your ultimate go-to? Mine is totally pizza. So when Overload is playing or I'm promoting the Metal Forge Live showcases or the big goddamn metal show, I go to Pizza Donisi. Pizza Donisi is gourmet artisan pizza from right here in Louisville, Kentucky. It features things like the pizza of the month, the sandwiches, and also vegetarian and vegan options, which is so totally fucking cool for all all of it's it's awesome pizza. You definitely want to go. Hey, and also from time to time they do cannolis. Oh, so fucking good. You know what they said, man? Leave the gun, take the cannoli. Yeah. Just like that in Godfather. They're located right next to the Mag Bar at 1396 South 2nd Street. So either stop in or call in at 502-213-0488. They're open till midnight. The Witching Hour. Heineken! Fuck that shit! Paps Blue Ribbon! Hey, Metalheads, you all hear me talk about Magbar all the time. It is the home to the Metal Forge Live showcases and is an integral stop in the ultimate underground metal tour schedule. They obviously feature live music, but the Magbar also has daily specials like Pint and Slice Night on Tuesdays with Pizza Donisi. But they also do Bring Your Own Vinyl on Thursdays with DJ Kent Jackson. And Finer Things Sundays. Located right next to Pizza Donisi at 1398 South 2nd Street. Open 3 p.m. to 4 a.m. seven days a week. Get your asses out to the Mag Bar. Rock out. In 2017, one man's vision and passion for all things metal started out as a record store in his house. Years later, the fight against a mainstream empire continues as Shade Beast. An independent metal collective and online store based in Athens, Georgia, is the world's premier heavy metal brand for music heads that value authenticity over the mainstream acceptance. Featuring original t-shirts from some of the best underground artists, as well as stickers, posters from the Shade Beast Presents concert series. Unique, one-of-a-kind collectibles and small curated selection of vinyl and cassettes from the masters old and new. Visit ShadeBeast.com and enter promo code SITHLORD for free domestic shipping on your first order, whether you're a new customer or returning. And be sure to join the Shade Beast social groups on Facebook and the interwebs to keep up with the new release announcements and talk all things metal and Star Wars. You'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and filth. Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? 
then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop, the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. Since 2013, there has been a calling from the underground. From the graves of all those unholy. And they decided to make a zine to talk about all of this. Soul Grinder Zine! An independent metal zine to keep you informed on all things metal and horror from the underground. Available in both print and digital formats. They're bringing you the best interviews and reviews out there today. Not only do they do the zine, but they also do compilation CDs. Check them out at facebook.com slash soulgrinder.zine and start your subscription now. Hey everybody, let me tell you about the new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Unchained Tapes. They're an independent Pennsylvania tape label. They focus on extreme metal and punk with a killer approach to the tape scene. Visit their web store at unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com now to get your fill of tapes. And for being a Metal Forge listener, enter the code METALFORGE10 at checkout to get a 10% discount on your total purchase. That's unchainedtapes.com bigcartel.com What's up, Metal Forge fans? This is Alan Bishop, the alchemist of Indiana's Black Forest and head distiller at Spirits of French Lick. Do you find yourself drawn to the unexplained, fascinated by the Fortean, or enchanted by the paranormal? If the things that go bump in the night resonate in your mind, then tune into my brand new podcast. If you have ghosts, you have everything. Featuring first hand accounts, collected stories, interviews, history, and speculation related to all things not of this world. Available now on Anchor, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and more. Set back, relax, and remember if you have ghosts, you have everything. Hey, let me tell you guys about Mercenary Press. They're an independent London label and distributor of all things metal. Mercenary Press delivers the goods from their own independent zine. Trust me, you're going to want to get in on that. To distributing various bands from all over the world, including Cramp from Spain and Sadistic Force from Texas. Visit mercenarypress.bigcartel.com to find out what all they have in stock and what you can order. And for Metal Forge listeners, enter code METALFORGE10 to receive a discount on your total purchase at mercenarypress.bigcartel.com. Check it out now. <laughs> 